This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to talk about applying lookup tables inside a Media Composer because I've gotten a couple emails from people asking me how to do it because it doesn't uh, you know, seem readily apparent when you are taking an effect called color lookup table and applying it and there doesn't seem to be a way to get in and import you know, lookup tables that you've downloaded from websites or maybe you've purchased them to work with in your timeline. So in this lesson, I want to show you how you're going to get those lookup tables into Media Composer. Then you can take them and apply them to clips that you've AMA linked to, or just apply them to specific clips in your timeline. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, now before we get rolling, I do want to give a shout out to this great website that I found called Behind the Screens. And the website, as you can see at the top, smallhd.com slash community slash movie dash looks dash download. And I downloaded these seven great free lookup tables that of course simulate filters being put on camera lenses for you, or in this case for us to use in this lesson, but for you to download and use in any production that you happen to be working on. So again, check them out. Uh, a great website and again, seven free lookup tables, which are fantastic. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for my Windows friends out there. And most people's workflow with LUTs goes like this. What they do is they call up the effects palette, Command and 8 on the Mac Control and 8 on Windows. And I'm just going to come down to the image category here. Let's just expand out the effects palette so we can see a lot more of the effects here. And again, I'm going to come down to the image category and you'll see that we have the effect called Color LUT right here. And what happens is, is that an editor will take it, drag it and drop it onto their shot. They'll step into effects mode. And when they come up to the drop down, there is no way to actually install the lookup table from this drop down, which is a common workflow in other applications after Effects Premiere. I don't want to say just about every other application out there, but pretty much just about every other application out there. So, of course, the question is begged how do we get the lookup tables into Media Composer? Well, let's talk about the two ways to do this. Now, I say two ways. Technically, they're the same way, but I call one a workflow method. And the other, just a quick, I need to get these lookup tables in here to do what I just did by applying them inside of the effect. Now, the workflow method is the situation where you're AMA linking to a whole bunch of clips that you need to get in. And whether you're doing, uh, I'll call it a color adapter change, a color shift. So for example, from log space to rec 709, uh, or whether you're doing stylistic, you're going to do that inside of your source settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to a clip that I've AMA linked to right here and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say source settings. We're always brought to the color encoding tab first. You'll see that we can get in and adjust the source's color space here. Or what we have the ability to do is to come in, like I just said, and to do some adjustments for, you know, perfect example, linear to rec 709. You know, we can get into log color space to rec 709. But what we want to do in here is to get in and start adding these lookup tables because they could be stylistic lookup tables. They could be for specific cameras. Who knows what they're going to be for? And we're going to do this inside of the color management settings. I'm going to call it the color management settings. And you'll see at the top we have a couple options that in most cases, depending on your workflow, are going to be left checked. And down here at the bottom, this is a cool one. We have the ability to choose where do we want to install these lookup tables? Do we want to install them into the project? Do we want to have them shared or do we want to have this for both? Now, in most cases, unless you're a greedy editor, you're going to want to share these lookup tables with your fellow editors. So you might want to select both. Now, why would you definitely want to select both as it just opposed to selecting shared? Well, the reason that you would want to do that is so that these lookup tables are backed up with your project 
when you back it up or in a situation where you have to send your project to another editor somewhere else that's not in your facility, doing it this way will have the lookup table sent with the project. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to leave the options set as both and let's select the lookup table file. Now you'll notice that as soon as I select the LUT file, you'll see that I can choose between three options, a TXT file, an XML file, or a .cube file. Now for us, we're going to be going with the .cube file and it is located on the desktop. And I'm just going to select the first three, okay? And once I select the first three, I'm simply going to say open. You'll see in a matter of seconds, the lookup tables were successfully installed. I'm going to say okay, and I'm going to say close. And now in my drop down, you'll see right down here at the bottom, there are my three lookup tables. Now I'm just going to select one here. Let's just select one that goes a bit to the extreme. We'll select the bad boys two. Sorry, I'm not supposed to say bad boys. The B boys two lookup table, not to be confused with the, the film bad boys. I'm going to add that as the lookup table. There we go. And once I say apply and OK, this lookup table is now attached to this clip. Now, if I was to right click and say consolidate transcode, you'll see that inside of my transcode options, I do have the ability to bake that lookup table into the footage so that it's always going to be attached. Now, that's a completely it depends on your workflow method of going about doing things. You might want to do that, you might not. Now, I did say before that these lookup tables are going to be applied into a shared location and into the project. Now, if I come to the project here, inside of my Avid Projects, where's my Let's Edit with Media Composer, there's the Let's folder with my three lookup tables that I imported. Now, as far as the shared location goes, I'm going to call it up on the screen right here for both Mac and Windows. So if you need to get in and find these lookup tables, of course, why would you ever want to do that? Maybe you want to get in and delete them so you don't see them inside of color management anymore. You can do that right here from within these folders. Okay, let me get back into Media Composer here because I want to show you the other way. It's I like to call it the down and dirty method. This is if you just want to get in, you've got some stylistic lookup tables you want to put in because you just want to start applying them into your timeline with the color LUT effect. What we're going to do is head to our settings. Yes, that's right. In our settings right here, color management, there we go. I'm going to select a lookup table. I'm going to select the last four. I'm going to say open. There we go. They're good to go. I'm going to say close. Once I do that, you'll now see that if I step into the color lookup table effect and I drop that down, there are my seven lookup tables all set to go inside of my Media Composer timeline. Again, as real-time effects. Now, what I'm going to do here is just apply this to the other two shots. We'll just switch them up here. Let's just go with, um, how about the life-giving tree? There we go. And with this last one, we'll just select uh, the matrices, not to be confused with the matrix, the matrices. And I'm just going to come back to the beginning, hit play, and there's the lookup tables applied to my clips, playing back in real time in my timeline. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.